Okay, so here we want to solve for the inverse of a function. And one thing I want to concentrate on is to follow these three rules, regardless of how the problem looks. We want to follow these three rules. The first thing we want to do is solve for x. Let's isolate x, get x by itself on one side of the equation. Once we do that, we want to switch our x's and our y's, switch x and y. Um, and then when we do that, we're going to replace y with f inverse. And that's when we know we will have solved uh, the inverse of the function. So the first thing I want us to do, um, let's look at two, x plus 5. All right, let's find the inverse of f of x is equal to 2x plus 5. I'm going to re rewrite this really quickly as y equals 2x plus 5. Okay, now we're going to go through. The first thing we want to do is solve for x, get x by itself. So we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. So y minus 5 is equal to 2x. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to divide everything through by two. Well, that's going to give us y minus five is equal to x. Okay. Now, once we do that, y minus five is equal, y minus five over two is equal to x. We do what we said we were going to do earlier, and that is we want to switch our x's and y's. Okay, so now we have x minus 5 uh, divided by 2 is equal to y. And now we go down to number 3, which is x minus 5 over 2 is equal to f inverse of x. Well, let me write this the right size. Imagine this is our inverse. Uh, we want to stay disciplined and make sure we continuously follow these three steps. Okay, let's look at another one. Um, let's look at f of x um, let's go equals four x minus seven. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is rewrite that y is equal to four x minus seven. And now yeah, we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, let's go for number one, which is solve for x. To get x by itself, we need to add seven to both sides. It's going to give us y plus 7 is equal to 4x. Next, to get x by itself, we need to divide both sides by 4. That's y plus 7 divided by 4 is equal to x. Okay. And remember, We've solved for x, so the thing we need to do now is switch our x's and y's. Okay, and once we do that, we switched, we've switched our x's and y's. We replace y with f of inverse.
And that's how we do this one. Um, I want us to look at one more. Um, let's look at more with the square root. Okay, so here we have f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 3. So of course, as we said before, I'm going to rewrite this problem is y is equal to the square root of x minus 3. Now, the object is to solve for x. We want to get x by itself. And what will we do? We need to square both sides. We want to make sure I'm going to write this down. Okay, uh, we still want to square both sides. So we square this left side. And we also square this right side. We do this so that we can get rid of our um, square root. So this is going to give us y squared is equal to x minus 30. And we've got y squared is equal to x minus 3. And as we said on the previous problems, our whole objective is to get x by itself. Which we have done. So we've solved for um, x in this particular problem. Once again, our next step after we solve for x is to switch the x's and the y's. And now, once we switch the x's and the y's, we can replace x. I'm sorry, we can replace y with f inverse. Okay. And that's how we do this type of problem. So those are three examples you know, that we keep on how to find the inverse of a function.